welcome to Sindhi Film Festival. Today I am very lucky because I have Mohan Gihani sir with me. We have him uh, with us today to talk about his new book which is on Gandhi Dham, Desert Land to Homeland, The Land That Could Have Been the New Sindh. It's by Mohan Gihani and after a picture, uh, there's a picture in the center, it says Bhai Pratap, the man who achieved the impossible. So we have uh, Mohan Gihani, sir, and I want to ask him a few questions now. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview. It's, such it's a my pleasure. Office. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's stupid to think that I need to introduce you, but I will attempt. I am a little intimidated just with the fact that I have to introduce you, so I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to say... You consider yourself a soldier in the movement of Sindhya. What does that mean? Actually, this is a moment in India about the Sindhi identity. When we came here, because nobody knew we are here to go. When there is an earthquake or when there is a flood, suddenly the people start running. Yeah. They don't know in which direction they are going. The similar thing happened with the Sindhi community. And as in such calamity happens, even the family members don't remain together. They get separated. This was a condition under which we migrated to India. But then when we came here, we were asked the question, why have you come and who are you? It was very difficult for us to answer the question as who are we? Because we took our identity for the granted while we were in Sindh. Here our very identity was being questioned and that led us to explore our core identity and language happens to be a part of our core identity. At that time we did not feel that we have any danger to our language. But then we wanted to bring about the awareness and in that process we started discovering ourselves and our roots. This is how the movement of Sindhyat started. These are the basis. Okay. Sir, can you very briefly uh, tell us about this book? I am fascinated yesterday at the seminar, uh, Lakhvi Khilani sir told us that the new book is out and I was like, okay, this is fantastic, we need to know more about this book. Can you please tell us the journey, the process of the book? Actually, if you look at it, the 50 or 60 years in the history is nothing. You can't count 50 or 60 years as a history. So when Lakmi Khilani approached me to write the book, I ultimately rejected the idea. Then it occurred to me that all the cities have been established either by emperors, kings, conquerors, but there has never been any instance in the human history where an ordinary man has dared to establish a city. And it was this fact which fascinated me to study the life of Bhai Pratap and to understand the struggle that he underwent and who were the core members of his team 
how did the idea originate? And I told her, okay, Lakshmi, I am coming because I knew that there were people alive who had oral histories to tell me about how the entire city came up, how the entire, we had the documents, how the entire city was conceived. And then I got into it. I was living at Bhopal. They made arrangements for me and my wife to stay with them at Malir. And I stayed with them at Malir for four months, met the people, collected the literature, and I brought this book. Thank you. Sir, you wrote in your preface um, that you were skeptical in the beginning about the book. And I want to quote, I thought, what could one write about the sleepy twin townships tucked away in one extreme corner of India, especially one situated in a desert? How could a mere 60, 65 years qualify as history? So all these thoughts uh, you have mentioned, yeah. what was that turning point that made you decide, yes, you will do the book? And can you tell us something about Bhai Pratap as well? Bhai Pratap was uh, basically a Sindhwarki merchant. But then he was associated with the freedom movement also. He came from an affluent Baiban family in Hyderabad, had a very good house. Whenever any important person would come to Hyderabad, his house would be open. That way he had a personal connections with all the national leaders because they had been his uh, guests. And he had a direct contacts with Mahatma Gandhi. And while he, he was worried where to settle Sindhis, where Sindhis should be settled. It is said that in a very pensive mood, he was moving to Bombay. And one lady was sitting beside him. By chance, the plane landed at Buj. He was sharing his concern with that lady and she said, this is the land where you can settle your people. Because he was a student of history, he was not only a merchant, he was expert on Egyptology. He had read, he was a very well read man a cultivated man. And then he approached Gandhiji. Another thing, the fact that uh, it was a coincidence. Nature takes uh, so, many, so many incidents take uh, naturally in their own way. Kutch has a very thin ratio of population. And in early 40s, the Mara of Kutch found that there could be a deep water seaport near Kanla. And he wanted to develop that place. And he had problem from where to bring the people. Because he had no people. When Mahatma, through Mahatma Gandhi, he made Mara of Kutch. 
Mara of Kutch wanted people and we wanted a land. So it was a win-win situation for both the parties. And then all the paperwork started, which is given in the book. Yeah, sure. Sir, I want to ask you um, if you can tell us a little bit about the Sindhu Resettlement Corporation. Yeah. So SRC is a big part yeah. of the book, but also about how Gandhi Dam came into being. Yeah. So if you can please tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Because in order to build a city, you need an institution. Yeah. At that time, there was no concept of a cooperative societies. There was no act, cooperative societies act in existence. Because uh, India was still trying to find its feet. The constitution had not come into being. The only instrument was that he should have a company incorporated company. So Sindhu Resettlement Corporation was formed where he could share the sales to uh, sell shares to the people of the company and those shareholders would be entitled to purchase the plots. And today I am told the if you have an original share of Sindhu Resettlement Corporation, it's worth hundreds of thousands of times than its face value. Wow. So, but inflation is there. So, it's the costliest share. This is how the Sindhu Resettlement Corporation came okay. into being. Okay. And he became a managing director mm-hmm. by Pratap. Yeah. At that time, Acharya Kirpalani, who was once upon a time before freedom, the president of the Congress, Gandhiji told him that you have to be president of this institution. And Acharya Kirpalani was the chairman or the president of Sindhu, first president of Sindhu Resettlement Corporation. Okay. Okay. So, this is one of the photographs in the book yeah. which I thought was very beautiful. So, can you please talk to us about this photograph? I found it very fascinating. Yes. Mm-hmm. You want to sell the shares. Mm-hmm. You want to pay, tell people that you have a land. We are going to build the houses. So, you need the marketing. Yes. And this is a part of the advertisement marketing. Oh, so this was the advertisement. Uh, advertisement. To reach out to the people. If you have read the book, there is a, a full, you know, account as to what were the means adopted to popularize the idea of this place being a hometown of Sindhis. Even sing- singers were enlisted. Even Hasanan Jadugar, a magician who could collect people, he would tell people in his voice there were records that Gandhi Dam, a new city is being built for you. But then so many unfortunate things happen which are given in the book, the dream could be sold only to few people. Because people wanted food, employment, and in order to create employment, let me give you one instance. In order to create an employment, because the land had to be cleared. There were some poisonous insects, some say snakes, some scorpions. He told people, don't worry. Take out fear out of your heart. Catch a snake 
come and take two rupees from me. Catch scorpions, take money from me. This is how he made people fearless by Pratap. This is how the land was cleared. This is how the you know employment was generated so that people get money, people spend money. The economy grows. It was a very challenging dream. Because this is how the cities are created. Yeah. So finally, I want to ask you, what is your message for the readers of this book and for the present young generation? Yes, see, there have been so many accidents in the history. Nobody expected partition. No. There are always social contradictions. We as Sindhis don't fit in into the Indian society because of the reason that Indian society is based on caste and creed. And Sindhi society does not have a caste and creed. So we cannot be assimilated. We have earned a lot of money. We purchase the protection. We don't have political power, but we purchase the protection. You may say that why should we have a political power? We can have access to so many MPs. We can have access to so many. It's like saying that why you need to be yourself is strong when you can employ a strong Gurkha or a Sentry. But it is necessary that you should also be strong. When the social contradictions are at their height, it is the weakest link in the chain that breaks. And in that event, the Sindhi community is the weakest link which will bring. And this is going to be a sort of a accident insurance policy. What you mentioned if yeah. we collect the funds, develop this land, create our stake, create, develop and employ, create the employment for the people of the region so that when there is any accident we are placed to go. So please be foresighted, be prepared for accident in the history that may happen any time. We hope not, but we should be prepared. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you for this interview. And most importantly, thank you for writing this book. I will be going through this book and um, doing a small, my views on the book um, video. But I want to thank you for writing it and making a very important contribution to Cindy studies. Thank you. I had done my duty as I told you, I'm a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> You're marching ahead. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I feel all such efforts which promote Sindhiyat and Sindhi, including this channel, should be supported and the young people who are coming up, they deserve all our support. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you like the video, ring the notification bell and also if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. We really look forward to talking to you in the comments. We would love to hear your feedback. Let us know which other people you would like me to interview, which other books you would like me to talk about. And until I see you in the next video, goodbye.